Hey, what's up people? We're on this 1970 Firebird build. Uh, this is West Side Poncho. And West Side Poncho wants you to know that I've been at this for a little longer than uh, a decade, a little longer than two decades. I've been into Firebirds for approximately 38 years, plus or minus a couple days. I'm bringing this old bird, 1970, back to its factory Bermuda Blue found right underneath its uh, front uh, rear view mirror. Some drunken cowboy uh, had painted this and it's all chipping out and cracking out really bad now. Uh, people don't take your paint job to a uh, drunken concrete cowboy. Let him do your concrete, but uh, can't prove that. Anyway, the portion of this is we're trying to get to these 17 by nines. Uh, 2002, built by Speedline, put on the WS6 and their uh, factory wheel. Of course, Speedline built that for Pontiac. We're going to get rid of the 1976 Red Bird. I don't know what Pontiac was thinking about the Blue Bird and the Yellow Bird and the Red Bird. I call them clown wheels. But uh, in order to put that much rubber up front and start putting a lot of pressure on it, I'm going to bring my uh, front subframe up to better than factory ever could have thought. They punched these out and uh, boy did they booger them up. Got uh, welds going on. Hey, shout out to Advanced Powder Coating. Advanced Powder Coating, you guys blew me away with your uh, service on getting this cleaned up so I could re-weld all the factory welds. Got one here, if you look real close, that there is cracked. So. That's why we're doing this. We're gonna re-weld each seam, make it into a race car special. Doing some coilovers. The reason we're doing coilovers is uh, obviously better than factory. Here's just a coil and an upper control arm of factory. This coil here weighs way more than this here Viking that I got from Speed Tech Performance. Speed Tech Performance. They did me the upper control arms as well as a coilover. And uh, I was going to use their coilover conversion. Start off down that line, cut and removed that piece, use their template. Really didn't uh, start losing my way of does it go here, does it go there, does it go here. You know, basic novice stuff. I can certainly figure it out. I punched my center line of where the old uh, shock tower was. Uh, so to speak, uh, but still didn't really like the way I was going to line this up with a sh chicane. So the other thing I didn't like is uh, if I do get to removing all this material that is stamped factory, uh, take out a little bit of the, the torsional value of this year frame, the subframe. So I kind of wanted to put something back in there, much like what Umi Umi Performance, I ordered their kit as well. They've got a reinforcement ring that's going to go in place of uh, where that is cut out. And uh, cut around there and put that reinforcement ring back in there, put a little more structure back in there. Kind of like to get it something even more uh, thick than that. But uh, Umi Performance, their template for the 2661, boy, it's uh, novice style because look here. You don't have to guess. Front, back, and it fits in there snug. It's going to show you exactly where to cut. You know, the only thing easier is uh, maybe let them cut it. Theirs is a positive placement. Put it right in there where the uh, factory holes are. Notch it up on top. You got fat, you got a, a positive, uh, positive placement. Uh, so I like that. And uh, we're going to work on through that. But that's, uh, that's really what's going on right here at the uh, West Side Ponchos. Come on back. <laughs> 